Aston Martins are driven by a certain kind of person, the ones that eschew showmanship, chintz and bright lights. It's a widely held belief that an Aston driver will be let out of a junction that a Porsche driver will be sat at for days. An Aston Martin is a special breed, all about smoothness, understated elegance and effortless performance. It's the thinking driver's choice. Or at least that's what everyone thinks, and for the large part they are right, but every family has a black sheep. That uncle your dad looks at with a mix of admiration and abject terror. Well, for the Martin family, it's this, the V12 Vantage S, and it's about as understated as a brick to the face. Way back in 2009, Aston Martin released something truly mad. Its engineers threw its largest engine, a 510 horsepower 6 litre V12, into its smallest car. It was a nod to performance, silliness, and an example of what happens when you give engineers free reign. It was very shouty, but the S on this one's rump adds a megaphone. Under its bonnet sits a 565 brake horsepower, 457 pound foot, 6 litre V12. 0 to 60 happens in 3.7 seconds, and its top speed is 205 miles an hour. That makes it the fastest Aston Martin ever, save for the limited run 177 hypercar. And all of that power is packed into a car no bigger than a hatchback. This is the holy grail of tiny car plus massive engine equals fun. It's the kind of car that kids dream of, which is great because I'm basically a big kid. The S is pretty different to the base V12 Vantage we drove a while back. Yes, it still has silly vents on its bonnet, but I'd rather have those than a fire. It's lost the traditional Aston grille in favour of a smaller carbon fibre doodad. Now that harks back to the stunning CC100 concept released in 2013. stage adaptive damping you've got three modes normal sport and track and that's a first for the Vantage as is its gearbox in the old V12 Vantage you could have a six-speed manual but not anymore Aston Martin has put a seven-speed automatic in this one personally I'd prefer to have manual at least as an option but uh, Aston has decreed that's not to be so um, them's the brakes you can have black bits on the roof, new black wheels, and brakes bigger than most people's heads. The exhaust is derived from the 177 hypercar, which means it's noisier than pretty much everything in the world ever. This is a car set up for anger, fire, for making noise and waking people up, for telling people that yes, you've bought an Aston Martin, and if they don't let you out of a junction, you'll force your way out with all the power of Hades. and the power of Hades it well and truly has. This thing is an absolute animal. It's, it's just mad. 565 horsepower firing out through the rear wheels. It's just maddening just how much thrust this thing has. On a dry road in a straight line, you will just fly. You will fling yourself from corner to corner to the horizon again and again and again and again and again. You get this wonderful noise just washing over the cabin from the V12 and ooh, that noise is um it's a special one I'll give it that it's uh it's one of the best car noises ever I think however we leave the noise and all that to one side for a moment let's talk about the actual drive normal mode all well and good lovely comfy cruiser but press the sport button that sat on the dashboard and then the steering gets a little quicker the throttle response gets a little sharper everything just becomes noisier. But you twin that with the fact that you don't actually have to have the adaptive dampers set to any kind of back braking level. So you can have a normally sprung car, but with all the power and drama and noise that you want from something like this, which is a master stroke. You can then stick it into sport and it does firm up a little bit and you can stick it into track and it firms up even further. If you're feeling a little brave, but not super brave, 
stick the traction into track mode and you get a little bit of slip and you can play with it and you feel the balance of the car and you work with the steering and it's oh it's, it's just magical you can feel it through your fingertips everything about it just screams i'm an aston drive me as hard as you absolutely possibly can please make me work for my supper or petrol which by the way this goes through at quite a rate but that's not a surprise for a six litre v12 the engineers that put this together did an incredible job with pretty much everything and i say pretty much because there is one downside to this car but it's a kind of minor caveat downside it is the gearbox it's a robotized manual so essentially it takes the person out of the changing which is fine that's very good this is the third iteration of this gearbox but i do wonder just what the first two iterations were like because when you're in town and you're waking up and the gearbox is waking up you're in drive you're going along all of a sudden it decides oh i want to change up a gear and it's as though you drive through a patch of glue you sort of lurch forward a little bit and then when it hits two and a half three thousand rpm it goes oh i want to change up again you lurch again and it's just generally unpleasant and sometimes it just can't make its mind up but this isn't a car built for town yeah it's going to start there going slowly and cruising about but this is a car built for your favorite road that one ribbon of tarmac that you know really really well that you can hoon it down because then the gearbox just works especially with the sport button turned on it makes it more ferocious so it hangs onto the gears longer the chains are sharper and angrier this is a car to drive in anger yeah it does have a little bit of trouble putting its power down but i like the rawness to it i like the fact that it's so angry and unfettered this is what aston martin is underneath the veneer underneath all the loveliness that you get all the gt cruisiness all the peppy sports car shares all this oh it's just a brilliant car yes the sports seats are uncomfortable yes the gearbox is janky around town but you get that noise cramming itself into your ears, crawling under your skin. You come alive with the car. This becomes a driver and machine event. Driving this car in anger or driving this car, just with everything turned to let's have some fun, Aston Martin has, has let themselves go a little bit with this. You do have to work with the car a little bit more to get it to go where you want it to go, to get it to do what you want to do. And when you think about it, isn't that what sports cars are all about? There's easy power, which is brilliant. Don't get me wrong, love just being able to get in, press the button and go, but every now and then you want a car that's gonna push you, that's gonna make you want to go that little bit faster, work that little bit harder, because it makes your smile just that little bit bigger. It doesn't care about your ears or your personal space. It wants to be free. It wants to explore and scream its way through the world. The V12 Vantage S is not a car to be taken lightly. You can take it out on the road and have all kinds of fun, then go to a track, turn everything off and slither about to your heart's content. But if you poke the angry bear just that little bit too hard and it doesn't take all that much provocation, well, it'll bite. It is nothing short of a brilliant, undiluted driving experience. And yeah, it may be the black sheep of the family, but they always have the best stories.